Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another instalment of What's in the Watch Roll. Do you remember these videos? I used to make them every time before I got on a plane, either to sit by a pool and eat exotic food if I was going somewhere exotic, or to sit in someone's living room with a jumper on and drink iron brew if I was heading back to Scotland. Oh, come back 2019, all is forgiven, I promise you. Seriously, I know that Australia has had a much easier time than most of the rest of the world in terms of the direct impact of the disease, but we have endured various lockdowns and social restrictions the same as everywhere else. And Australians are suffering from the same social malaise as everywhere else, I promise you. So wherever you are, whatever circumstances you are currently enduring, I hope that you are doing whatever it takes to look after your headspace. I'm going to look after mine this week. I'm heading up to Queensland. I'm heading up to Brisbane for a little bit of winter sun. There have been various state restrictions. You haven't been able to travel between states, but Queensland opened their borders last week and there was a huge rush of people heading north, including my wife. Her family are in Brisbane. She hasn't seen them for six months. She actually was due to fly next week, but flew last week instead, being terrified that they would shut the borders again and she wouldn't see them for another six months. I'm driving up. It's about a thousand kilometers, about 600 odd miles, but it's a nice, easy drive. And it's gonna be great to see something other than these four walls for what seems like the first time in months. And I get to take my Banks and Sloan watch roll stuffed full of four watches for me to play with while I'm up in Queensland. So what am I taking? Well, one old favourite, one loner and a couple of noobs. Let's flip the camera and have a look at them. Okay, so an old favourite currently on wrist. I'll show you that first and then three more watches in the roll. I would say the first two are a little bit hot at the moment in their own way. The third watch, the last one I'm gonna show you, I'm not sure how many of you expected to see this watch on the channel ever again, let alone being chosen by me as one of only four watches that I'm going on holiday with, but I do have my reasons and I will get to that a bit later on. Let's start with the watch on wrist first, the old favorite. It is of course my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Master Coaxial Chronometer 38 and a half millimeter. Perhaps you watched the video that I made about this one a couple of weeks ago, my three year roller coaster journey with the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. This was the watch that my wife gave me when we became engaged. So it's my engagement watch, very, very special watch, obviously in my collection and one that I will never ever sell. But as I discussed in that video, I did have a bit of a struggle getting used to this one. It took a while and it took a bit of a big decision on my part. The decision being to get the polished mid-links brushed out by Michael at Horologists in the Sydney city centre. At that point, I really engaged with this watch. I connected with it on a level that I simply hadn't before. It's one of two watches that are a bit dangerous for me. I mean, my job as a watch reviewer means I should be wearing review watches as much as possible. And this, along with the Seiko Saab, are both watches that I find that if I put them on, it's difficult to take them off again. Anyway, we're heading up to Queensland and it is the fifth year anniversary since my wife and I went on our first date together. So if I wasn't wearing this one on my wrist on that anniversary, I would be in big trouble, which is why it's included in the four watches today. Watch number two then, this was the loner that I alluded to in the introduction and a watch that is a little bit hot right now. It's the Oris Diver 65 Momotaro Special Edition. This is a collaboration with a Japanese denim manufacturer, Momotaro. They have manufactured the strap, as you can see here, Momotaro Jeans, Okoyama, Japan. So it's an Oris 65 with a bronze bezel. You know how much I adore these watches. There is just something a bit special about the Oris 65, I think. It's a kind of a twist on their Movember Special Edition they did a few years ago. It's got that similar green fade dial, but with this nice addition of the Japanese strap. So I guess for guys who are into watches or girls who are into watches and denim combined, this is like fantasy land right here. These are about 2,200 US dollars. This one is on loan to me. I've got to hand it back, unfortunately. My contact at Oris Australia said that these had sold out within a matter of days. So they're expecting a fresh batch coming into 
Australian stores anyway towards the end of this month. So I'm lucky to have it. Really looking forward to trying another, yet another twist on the Aorus 65. This one looks great. I'll see how I get on with that strap as well. Watch number three, and we're back down to earth in terms of pricing anyway. I picked this one up on eBay last week for $49.99, which is the equivalent of about 30 USD, 25 quid or so at the moment. We do tend to pay over the odds for things here in Australia. This is the Casio A700W, and it's a watch that is a little bit hot in its own right at the moment. This is from their vintage collection, and a lot of people are heralding it as the F91 replacement. Now we all know that the actual F91 replacement is the W217H, but people don't seem to be buying that one in the same numbers that they are buying this one. Super, super slim, six millimeters thick. Look at that thing. It is gonna be on the smaller and daintier side of life, that's for sure. And that is probably gonna remove a number of hairs from my arm, for sure but I will report back on this one in a full review in a few weeks time when I come back down from Queensland and let you know how I got on with the depilatory action. Basically an F91 module, little bit of color on the dial, but the big bonus here is that it is incredibly slim and incredibly light at just over 40 grams. Are you sitting down? Don't be too shocked, but watch number four is the time-traveling Guanchin Cheronometer that I reviewed a couple of months ago. Now, I gave it a bit of a mauling in the review because of the not one, but two typos on the dial. Guanchin since 8500 and Cheronometer automatic. I kept saying it was a real shame that they'd made the double typo because it's a decent watch. It really, really is. Pretty much everything you could want for less than 100 bucks. I reckon this is one of, if not the best sub $100 watches that I've looked at on the channel to date, and that includes all of the Pagani designs. I talked about the possibility of Pagani Premium in the last Pagani design watch that I reviewed. This is pretty much what I would imagine Pagani Premium would look like. The bezel works nicely, it doesn't bounce, it doesn't wobble. The whole thing is just a notch above most of the Pagani stuff. Admittedly, the price was a notch above as well. This one was $100, but the bracelet's nice. The bracelet clasp is nice as well. It's not as stiff, it's not as wobbly. It does have the kind of easy link rip off in there, but it's much easier to operate as well. The only real neg with this one, apart from the poor loom, you never get decent loom on a watch at this price, is the Miota 8215. Not my favorite movement. They do tend to be a bit noisy and a bit wobbly and a bit kind of spinny and clicky on wrist. I would probably pay another $10, $20 on top for a Seiko NH35 in here, but hey, you can't have everything, I guess. So the Omega and the Oris are all well and good, but they're a little bit posh and I can't exactly beat up on a loaner watch when I've got it. The Casio, the 700, is a little bit light and flimsy, so I felt I needed to take something that was in between all of those just in case I do end up helping my in-laws with the gardening or whatever, and I'm still keen to wear a watch, hence the Guan Chin. So when I'm off on my travels and only taking four watches, I do like to cover all of my bases, and I reckon that most bases are covered with this little selection here. Don't worry, I've been pre-recording like mad. You will not be short of your thrice weekly dose of Jomwa. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. I will see you in a week or so.